it is. It's a 74. It's an 80 inch, whatever. And he says, this is tired. It's worn out. Yeah. What can we do with it? Uh, there's two ways. You could either just bump compression, cam, a uh, little light way out, but it's really hard to substitute cubic inches. Uh, so I always recommend to bump the motor up to bigger cubic inches if okay. man can afford it. Okay. He brings you the motor right. is smoking, probably. Correct. You know, he's got the rings are shot, guys are shot, you know, whatever, and it needs a lot of work. What's the best way for him to go and Well, then I would go, if, uh, like on the Evo, I would recommend uh, high compression pistols. That would give him a more pump for his money than it, almost anything. Uh huh. Uh, shovel head, I'm not real crazy about compression because they seem to ping a lot unless you do plug the head. Okay. Uh, dual plug the head. Yeah. There's a ticket not a lot of people are having. Right. I mean, it's it works great, great on shovel heads because of the combustion dome figure on the piston. Okay. It kind of gets shrouded. Right. Uh, Evos, it's not really that necessary because the dome is not flat top piston. Right. So it really doesn't affect it as bad. Uh, but it's I really recommend cubic inches if the man can afford it. Okay. Or, you know, you could go pipes and all that stuff. That's always a, a given thing that they're changing pipes. So. Sure. Sure. I, it's, there's no secret to the fact that you, you let one of these motors breathe, and it's going to run right. better for you. Right. But um, I brought you my Evolution motor many, many years ago. Right. I said it's got 100,000 miles on it. By the way, it did go 100,000 miles, factory motor. Two up, riding hard outs. God knows how I ride. I don't, I don't baby it. And uh, it lasted that long. That's a Harley Davidson motor. That's a tribute to oil changes, okay? Right. Taking care of your motor, all right. right? Keeping an ear out for it, fixing what's wrong when right. it goes wrong. All right, but I brought it to him and said, Scott, it's tired. Two up with a girl, luggage. I couldn't keep up with the fact it was doing 85 and 90. Yeah. Scott said, let's beef it up. We looked at some options. Right. Actually, the first one we did was big four cylinders, which it increases your cubic inches. Right. Uh, but if you can afford it, do the flywheels too. Bring it up to like a 96 inch motor. It lasts just as long as stock does. Well, that's where we're sitting now. Right. Correct. Now we looked at the chart. We went initially with an 88 inch big bore kit. Right. That's available S and S, I believe it yes. is. Is that the Sidewinder kit? Uh, it's one other hop up kit. That's okay. 88 inches. But so is the 96. They make a 96 inch Sidewinder kit, which they, they recommend because it lasts just as long as stock motor. Works. I think we're getting to that pretty soon. Yeah. Um, so we went with an 88 inch big bore kit. Correct. Build the heads. Yes. Not how much off the heads? Uh, about 50. 50? 50,000? Yes. Yep. Okay. Change the exhaust. I put a Thunderheader on it, correct? Two right. one exhaust works great. It worked just wonderful. I, I, I love it. I, yeah. And being a guy that isn't a speed guy, okay, right. I like the way it sounds. I also like the way it looks. But it's functional as well, folks. Thunderheaders. Um, and I put this back together, and I'm going to tell you the difference between what I brought Scott. And what I put back in my frame and rode away was it was absolutely amazing. It just I, the diff, I know as soon as I went the throttle, even breaking the motor in, I knew that that power was waiting under there and it's still there. So I go another fifty thousand. Okay, now my motor's getting tired again. I'm smoking a little bit, having a little bit of trouble. All right, it's time to do something else. Next step up, we're talking now ninety six inch Correct. stroker. Yes. Okay. Change flywheels. Mm -hmm. Stroker flywheels. And it'll be back to just as reliable as a stock motor. That's the deal. More cubic inches. Uh -huh. You don't have to throttle it as hard. Kind of horsepower. Guys are going to ask. Uh, it doesn't mean much to me, but easy 100 horse. 100 horsepower motor. Okay. We're going to do anything with the heads? Yeah. We'll put uh, better springs in it. Springs are probably, they wear out pretty fast. Actually, faster than people think. Uh, Better flowing valves look maybe a little bit bigger on the intake. It's depending on the seat area. But and an S and S cover it, correct? And that's going to do the job. Yes. All right, now Scott, take us from the motor to the rear wheel. Is there anything special between the motor and the rear wheel that you need to transfer that power efficiently? No. Well, you're reporting got two choices: either chain or a belt. So. Okay. On a stock five-speed transmission, right. unless you want to go to a six, would you recommend going to a six if you could? If you're going to do a lot of highway riding, I would recommend a six. I love them. I love them. I you could do both ways. I've done one where you gear the crap out of it, 
so that it takes off faster. Uh -huh. But then once you get into the six overdrive, it acts like a normal five speed. So then you're not winding the crap out of the motor on the top end. Okay, you're talking initially, were you talking about sprocket sizes? Yes. Okay, give us a little quickie on that. Well, you can gear it so that it takes off just like a drag bike. So it takes out a whole part. Okay. And then you have an overdrive in six gear. So if you're going to cruise down the highway, you pop it in the six gear. And then it's, the motor doesn't rev like it would if you didn't have the six over. Understand? So that so that six gear becomes like the stop side crest gear is in in the bike. And then you then the motor will cruise down the highway, and then it, but then once you get off the highway, and you want to be Mr. Drag like the light, you can still do it. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Excuse me a minute. Absolutely. Still will be right back with us. Uh, uh, and we got just a couple more quick questions for him. He's got to take care of business. Like I said, his, uh, his shop is business. So uh, we'll be right back. Stick around and uh, don't ride away. Hey, there you have it. Part one of yeah. the shed this week uh, with the wonderful Scott Yamasaki. Uh, I've been doing business with Scott for over 30 years. And uh, uh, not only is this guy what fantastic rebuild mechanic and all around Harley Davidson mechanic, but he's one hell of a businessman. I, I gotta I gotta tell my little Scott story because I really think it, it speaks to the kind of businessman that he is. Um, Scott rebuilt my uh, my Evo motor had hundred thousand miles on that. Which motor. was in what? It, what in what? What kind of mo what kind of bike? What kind of bike? Yeah. Soft tail. A uh, soft tail. It was like in a soft tail. Right. Right. Anyway, uh, and it did not have nipple lights on it at the time. But uh, I took the. Then he's going to kick this. If you don't do the nipple light thing, get rid of the Let me talk about the nipple. All right. Anyway, so so I took the I took the motor into Scott. You know, I just pulled it out of the bike, brought it down it, and he said, "This motor is just it's just a little tired. You know, it's a little warm, but there's nothing really bad with it. Let's just freshen it up." I'm a nipple specialist. Don't we leaving the nipple thing kind of? You are. You 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 are. We were you are ex nippling. You are. Here's a name for a band: the ex nippleins. Anyway, we're not doing so anyway, I go, to, I, go to, I go to Scott and I say, you know, I want to rebuild this motor. I'm here at about 93 cubic inches. I'm thinking maybe we go to 107. He's like, what are you talking about? He says, what are you going to do with this bike? I said, I'm going to ride it around, you know, hang with, my, hang with my buddies. You know, I mean, at the time I was in a club. So I rode with a, I rode with a pack because, you know, every weekend we'd get together with the club. Anyway, so um, so he said, don't don't build it to 107 cubic inches. Don't build a big monster motor like that. He says, the bigger you make it, the less reliable it is. He says, I tell you what, I put SNS internals in this thing, punch it up to 88 cubic inches. You will not be sorry, and I have never been sorry. I got to tell you, we had a night when Trash and I both got our motors back from Scott. We just finished building our soft tails, and we did a ride out in uh, out in the western slope there on a road yep. where we just both took the bikes side by side. We didn't punch them off the line. We just slowly up the road, them up. kept rolling up the throttle just a little bit at a time, side by side. Got both those motors synced up, both of them 88 rebuilds by Scott. I tell you, man, the chicks on the back were about wetting themselves. It was oh, so cool. It was terrific. And we, finally, we got up to about 100 miles an hour when I backed off, I think, because I'm riding like right next to the road at 100, you know. Anyway, so we backed up, but it was a, it was a cool ride, man. Absolutely. 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 And, and I want to point out that what we did, what those rebuilds were, those are big bore motors now. They're, they're not strokers, nothing in the low end, no new wheels, rods, nothing. Same wheels and rods, yep. maybe you freshen up the bearings or something, but they're just big bore motors is and all they are. Bigger, they are motors, bigger fat ass pistons, you know, clean up the heads, make sure the springs are good and everything else, and tear out middle of, middle of 50 thousandths like right. Scott and I talked off the heads, increase, excuse me, increase that compression and get moving. But the other deal with Scott is he's a man who stands behind his word. Absolutely. And in this day and age of, of, of shysters, uh, carpetbaggers, and, and internet assholes, yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. all those goofy guys out there that are taking your money and running. I blew out after 10,000 miles on this motor. I blew an upper seal on it. Scott says, take the tanks off the bike and bring it in. I took the tanks off the bike. I brought it in. He charged me for the parts. One day. One day. Bang, bang. Fixed the whole thing. Just charged me for it. He says, there must have been a defect with this. I'll replace it. All the labor's free. Now, you tell me a guy who's going to stand behind his labor on a motorcycle motor in Denver after it's got 10,000 miles on it. And let me Nobody. tell you. And let me tell you. It ain't going to happen. Let me tell you. If that hadn't 